you're officially our person of interest. It's gonna be manhunted. Okay, we got Jordan. Jordan over there? Jordan? I'm Dr. Jordan Nguyen. I'm an inventor and entrepreneur from Sydney, Australia. This is the same kit that they used in Game of Thrones. I live and breathe tech, but despite travelling the globe talking about it, I've never been to what may be the most exciting place in the world right now for new private technology companies, China. Walls are coming down here. Young, hungry entrepreneurs are at the forefront of the biggest trends in technology. Really well designed up. Taking on the traditional giants and risking it all. This is like heaven to an engineer. I want to see just what it takes to be an entrepreneur in China and to discover how startups here are being shaped by the culture of China's most exciting cities. I'm in Beijing. It's home to more billion dollar tech companies than anywhere outside Silicon Valley. I've come to Beijing because it's one of China's pioneering centers for innovation. I want to find out what's special about the startups that flourish here and how the character of China's capital city affects which ideas succeed. This is Zhongguan Sun, Beijing's biggest enterprise zone and it's home to 20,000 tech companies. And what they believe is the secret to their success is everywhere. There's really no confusion as to the sort of place that we're in. Everything relates to innovation. We've got those words everywhere. This is called InnoWay, for Innovator, InWow, InnoBox, and InnoNavi. It's pretty obvious. More than half the 45 or so billion dollar startups in China come from Zhongguansun and 40 more a day are founded in the hope of joining them. There's a company that started life here that explains just what the Beijing startup buzz is all about. Here we go. Just gotten onto the highway. Now the car is driving itself. There we are, 100 kilometers an hour in a car that's driving itself from a company that is less than one year old, our lives are in the hands of this computer right now. <laughs> I like how we're both laughing about that. <laughs> you might think you've seen autonomous test cars like this before, but this one is special. While pretty much every other autonomous car uses sensors costing tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, the sensors used by this one cost next to nothing. The reason this car can get away with such cheap components is that this car is super smart. While it might not see that well, it has a huge brain, much like the man who invented it, Wu Gansha. So what makes you see so special then? It relies on three components. The first is perception. The second is planning and decision. And the last one is control. The car needs to see the world around it, decide what to do with that information, and then act. So let's first look at perception. It's equipped with quite a few sensors. Millimeter wave radar fires out radio waves and measures the amount of time it takes for them to bounce back, much like a bat does with sound. The car also has cameras. Together, these help build up a 3D picture of the surroundings. You say you're using a stereo pair there. I can see there's three, so that's really cool. One so, for closer object, yep. and two for the objects farther away. So this is for perception. And this is where Wu shows his class as an inventor. Almost every other car currently being developed relies on a third method for sensing the environment. LiDAR that uses pulses of light to build an image. It's super accurate, but traditionally has been super expensive. Wu's radical solution is to use cheaper methods to see the road and compensate by making the planning and decision making, the car's brain, better. It's like you don't have very good sight. 
but you have very good brain, right? The brain can really compensate it. So we invest a lot on the AI. By using sophisticated AI to keep costs down, we can compete with some of the biggest car companies on the planet. It's a perfect example of exactly what startup revolutionaries in Beijing are doing right. This is a very new industry. With the intelligence, you have to deploy a lot of new technologies, such as big data, artificial intelligence. And this is where China has the edge. China, and in fact Beijing in particular. With top universities here, attracting the smartest young people, and so many of them focusing on AI and big data, Beijing's startups are all about pushing the boundaries in this kind of tech. Big Data is the ace in the pack of a startup here called Mobike. At first glance, it looks quite different from UC, but in fact, it strikes me the two companies have lots in common. These are Beijing's famous hutongs. You're a hunter. Yeah, yeah no, great. Hello. I'm on the hunt for bikes. Chow works for a brand new bike sharing scheme that is taking Beijing by storm. Mobike. We have GPS, so we can back. He's trying to track down bikes that are broken or have ended up in places they shouldn't be. Let's go find this Mobike. Private homes, the forbidden city, or even government compounds. His GPS on his phone will tell him where it is. He can make it beat to help him find it. Hear that? It's great. There we go. So here's our lost bike. The reason Chow can find them is that these are no ordinary bikes. This is a bike sharing scheme and a bike that's fit for the 21st century. Like you see, Mobike thought laterally. It used a piece of tech that's easily accessible and at a stroke revolutionized the whole concept of the city bike share scheme. So open this map and you know the exact uh, location of uh, the Mobikes. There are a lot around here actually. The bikes are all equipped with GPS, so their location is automatically fed back to Mobike headquarters and then to your app. So you can pick one up or leave one anywhere you like. Find a bike. I'll show you. So there are a lot of bikes around here. Yep. Just click one icon and reserve and you it. You can reserve it. The second clever idea is their smart lock. It contains a SIM card so your phone communicates directly with the bike. Scan this QR code. Yep. As soon as the bike's unlocked, it automatically starts charging your account until it's locked again. But with bikes that can be left anywhere, there's a snag. The company can't spend all its time searching for broken bikes to repair, so they have to be super robust, which means Mobike needed to go back to basics and reinvent the bike from scratch. Good. Instead of a chain that could rust or be broken, these bikes use a drive shaft to propel them. It generates electricity to charge the battery when you pedal. It has electronic brakes and airless tires to eliminate flats. All in all, Mobikes have 200 patents in them. From the smart locks to the super tough alloy used to make the wheels, there are now more than 6 million Mobikes across 150 cities around the world. Lateral thinking and courage is what defines Mobike. That's why I think they're similar to UC. And there's more. As a business, Mobike are hiring out shared bikes. But they're also a big data company, gathering valuable information about all their millions of customers. Because the bikes are equipped with GPS, you can find out exactly how they're used. I guess you know that at certain locations, there's already a big uptake, so you don't need to push the marketing as much there, whereas maybe there's other areas you'd like to break into, so you'd like to put a bit more focus there. We are not merely a bicycle company. We are an internet-based um, technology and big data company. 
Big data goes beyond knowing how to market the bike share scheme itself. In the future, Mobike can monetize their huge database of China's young and adventurous bike riders. That's a great business idea. This used to be a city of bikes, which is clearly better for the environment. But I think once this technology really takes off, Beijing might become a city of bikes once again. Beijing's startup scene is beginning to give me an idea of how the world will look. But Mobike couldn't really be successful without another revolution that's already going on. There's a four quai each. As I'm discovering, perhaps more than anywhere on Earth, China has become the home of the smartphone. Wow. Oh. That's a tasty toffee apple. As I travel around Beijing, it's clear there's one massive recent change here that's playing a key role in the city's startup boom the explosion in smartphones. They're used for everything. You can even pay at market stalls. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> in 2016, Chinese consumers spent nearly 50 times as much as those in the US via their phone. More than five trillion US dollars. Even these things here that sell for next to nothing, you can pay for it with a QR code. It's a really great way to run the market. One of Zhong Guansun's biggest success stories is a company called Xiaomi, which helped create this smartphone revolution. You might call them a mobile phone company, but the secret to Xiaomi and what makes them special is that the phones are just the bait. Xiaomi is currently valued at $46 billion. Even though it was only founded in 2010, it's one of the biggest phone companies in the world. Doesn't this look familiar? But while the shop might look a bit like the kind of phone store you've seen before, Xiaomi is no copycat. The phones here are genuinely innovative. Take a look at that. Very nice screen, all the way to the edge. Special ceramics turn the whole phone into the speaker. You can put it here. Wherever you put it. Yeah. The software is pretty fun too. It'll show the, the people's age. Oh! Oh! The <laughs> it detects you, it tells you what your age is. I think I'm 27. We're sitting with that. I like that. It also makes me happier because it thinks I'm younger. Yeah, it's to make everybody <laughs> happy. The phones are cool, but what I find most interesting about this company is how it typifies to me Beijing's techie startup culture. It's hard to believe this company is only a few years old because it's been growing so fast they're actually already running out of office space. Xiaomi started life as a collection of coders and engineers called MiUI or Mi User Interface, which used the fact that the software powering Android phones can be changed by anyone. If you thought your phone needed an improvement, you could let the guys at MiUI know and they would code an update for you. It still works the same way. You don't like something or want a certain feature, just write to MiUI via their website. And I've got something I wish my phone could do. Here's an idea. Screen capture the entire browser page instead of just what's visible on the screen. I'm a coder, and technologists like me are still at the heart of Xiaomi. Forty small teams regularly gather together to check out what customers are saying, and I'm joining the latest brainstorm. Ni hao. Hi. 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 Where are you all going? We're looking at some new features that our custom want. And do you get a lot of these a week? Some of them is red. Every day. That's incredible. Lots of fans. A lot of fans. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> they're not customers, they're fans. Registered users are more than 50 million. 50 million? Yeah. yeah. And mm, wow. Do you know, I'm, I'm from Australia. We have 24 million people in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> you got you got twice as many people <laughs> on this than there are Australians. Yeah. <laughs> With so many people offering up suggestions, 
Not only can phones be released earlier, knowing that quirks and creases will quickly be ironed out, but ideas that might never have occurred to the company are sent direct to their inbox. Which means some brilliant ideas come in for free. I wanted to see what they thought of my idea. Full browser screen capture. It is a great, great idea. idea. <laughs> you guys are just being nice. <laughs> Should I see this on my phone soon? Yeah. 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 It's that effort to understand what Chinese consumers want and to do something about it that has done so much to get people across the country onto their phones. What Xiaomi has done shouldn't be underestimated. They understand that importance of the connection between them and their customers, so much so that they've managed to turn all of China into their very own R&D department. But the point is, to me, Xiaomi isn't really about the phones themselves. They've played their part in changing the way China consumes. But the important thing is that by getting their products into the hands of such an army of die-hard fans, they've opened up a new shop window to 200 million people who'll buy everything from games to films. Oh. By helping make the phone so central to life, Xiaomi has done as much as anyone to fuel China's startup revolution. I'm Dr. Jordan Yuan. I'm a technology inventor and entrepreneur, and I've come to China to see how the innovations of startups here are changing our world. One of the things that's really impressed me about the entrepreneurs here in Beijing is how innovative they are. Coming up with new ways to use existing technology, capitalizing on China's love affair with the smartphone. And it's not only the software, but the hardware too. Meet the guys from Neuton. This is the same kit that they used in Game of Thrones. Yes. Now I'm getting to try it. Noitom has come up with a sensor suit that can perfectly capture every movement of a human body affordably and incredibly precisely. Noitom's founder and CEO is Liu Hao Yang. This is a real type of application, so you will be hand, you, you see it instantly over there. Yeah. Yeah, it's very fast. Very fast tracking. It's just instantaneous. You sort of change your movements based on whatever character you've got on screen. Yeah. It's like you see yourself in the mirror, but the mirror is a magic mirror. Noitom's system uses 31 cheap sensors to plot movement, much like the accelerometer and gyroscope found in our phones. So just like your smartphone can track its own movements, yeah. each of these little sensors will track its movements. Yes. And together, you get a good model of the entire body. That's right. It used to be extremely expensive to capture motion, requiring a large camera setup or costly industrial sensors. But Liu spotted an opportunity created by the smartphone boom. With millions of phones being sold and built in China, the price of sensors dropped rapidly. That tracking is awesome. But his genius is that he worked out he could use software to improve the performance of those cheap sensors, filling in gaps that the sensors miss. As a coder myself, I know that's a hard problem to solve. One application that really excites me is in VR. These sensors can help make the virtual world feel far more real. Okay, Let's give it a go. You see, yeah, you see this headset on the ground? Yep. Uh, we can uh, wear it out. You can try to touch this rig. Use your hand, another hand. Oh, that is, that is weird. <laughs> you have a feeling of touch it, right? Yeah. I've got on an object that's both virtual and real. By attaching sensors to objects, you can both see and feel them. Because the sensors are so fast, objects react in the virtual world at the same time as they do in the real one, meaning touch and sight match perfectly. Oh, that's cool. This one would be a little harder. <laughs> <laughs> it's very quick. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do this. This is definitely a tough problem to solve, to make objects 
that you bring into the virtual world with you tracked so quickly and so accurately that you can do things like throw it and flip it around. When you can pick up objects and you feel them, it, it tells your brain that it's, it's even more real. Proving the software isn't the hardest part. It's having the vision in the first place to see what might be achieved and then having the courage to try and do it. That's what makes Beijing's startup pioneers special. This is the largest collection of camera feeds in Beijing at the Transport Control Centre. They monitor 60,000 cameras from here that film the busy streets and crowded roads of Beijing 24-7. Every day these cameras generate 165 years worth of footage between them. That's 1,200 terabytes of data. Trying to find a specific person or vehicle amongst all of this would be like trying to find a needle in a haystack. But what if cameras could understand what they're looking at? One of the reasons Beijing stands out is that the technologists and visionaries here are at the forefront of big applications in artificial intelligence. One startup revolutionary is using AI to make CCTV cameras smart. I'm really excited about this because these guys have actually created a camera system that until now I've only actually seen in the movies. It uses artificial intelligence to radically improve what the cameras can do. It can spot people in hoodies 50 metres away, recognise odd behaviour and track cars with no number plates across dozens of cameras automatically and instantly without the need for any humans to be watching. Deep Glint is an AI startup founded in 2013, and the man behind its sci fi vision is Zhao Yong. To show me how good his cameras are, Zhao's turning me into a wanted fugitive, which means he needs a mugshot. Right now, you're officially our person of interest here. <laughs> right, I'm okay. gonna get to go That's for a run. I'm gonna be manhunted. Ordinary CCTV cameras couldn't do any of what deep glints do, as they are passive, not active. I'm going to try to evade the cameras by using tricks and techniques that traditional security cameras struggle with. He's going to be hunted many times. I'm going to try to cover my face, hide in busy crowds, and remain as far as I can from the cameras. He's very smart. He's hiding behind other people. <laughs> Okay, we got Jordan. Jordan over there. Jordan, Jordan. He's not going to get away. <laughs> so, Mr. Zhao, did you find me? <laughs> Let's find out. Let's find out. Yeah. Let's find. Wow, look at you. I think that's you, right? That's yeah, well, yes. We are under okay, that, right. that building. Despite my best efforts, the computer has found and highlighted dozens of snapshots of me, even when my face was obscured. It's also neatly collected and logged them. If I really was a wanted fugitive, I'd have been caught. There really isn't anywhere to hide from this system. This may look like an ordinary security camera, but it's not. By adding artificial intelligence, it knows what to pay attention to and what to disregard, just the way a human does. It's turned ordinary security cameras into brains. And it's all thanks to deep learning AI. Computers are excellent at spotting patterns. If you explain enough times what something looks like, the AI starts to understand the patterns that make up a person, object, or behavior. The more it learns, the more intelligent it gets and the fewer patterns it needs to understand what's happening. It's that advanced ability that enabled the computer to spot the patterns that make up my face every time they appeared, even without a clear shot. But there's something else about Zhao's AI that makes his system even more mind-blowing. He's designed a tech version of one of nature's most complex creations, the human eye.
In the center of our human eye retina, there's a little spot called fovea. Fovea is very little, very tiny, but it contains more than 70% of the pixels of human eye. Deep Glint has turned security cameras into thinking brains, and they've done something even more amazing. They've made a tech version of the human eye. Let's actually, can, we can do experiment. Yes. If you look at me, yep. say focus on your, on my left eye. Yes. And don't rotate your eyeball at all. You wouldn't be able to see the other eye. No. That's just how little the fovea is. The human field of vision is around 200 degrees, but almost all of that is out of focus. The way it works is that our very wide view angle sight can see roughly where the object of interest is. And then it tells the little fovea, go to check it out clearly. Then we move our eyeball and we find a very clear, very high definition image of the object of interest. So we designed the camera exactly in the same way. Zhao's system uses two cameras, one that has a wide-angled view of the scene, and one, like the human fovea, that concentrates on a much more detailed section of the image. The artificial intelligence in Zhao's software recognises the patterns of a person, vehicle, or me, whenever they appear in camera one, and immediately tells camera two to flick to it. It can do this ten times every second. When it comes to a lot of different types of of sensors and technologies that we design, we look to nature and the biological inspiration in a lot of cases mm -hmm. uh, to, to really figure out where nature has got it right. Precisely. Because then we can, yes. we can mimic that with yes. biomimicry. Yes. But you've done that with the human eye and I haven't seen that before. Thank you. Being able to design camera systems that are based on the human eye, that itself is just mind blowing the way that this technology has solved a problem in a completely different way, that is true innovation. It's allowing computers to perceive the real world, the physical world, the way that you or I do. And there's a lot of potential in that. Deep Glint is the perfect example of the startup revolution in Beijing, a company that's innovating in AI and that's brave enough to attempt a totally new idea. The glass itself is a screen and it's a touch screen and you can see through it. Oh yeah, there's my sticky note. And this spirit of innovation in technology is affecting pretty much every type of company, both small and big. Like screen manufacturer BOE, based on the outskirts of Beijing. How many times will it bend before it breaks? The customer needs maybe 100,000 times. More than 100,000. BOE started making TV components for foreign manufacturers in the 1990s. And now it makes some of the coolest tech on the planet, like a screen that replaces the glass in conventional LCDs with a flexible nanotech film that I think could completely change the face of mobile phones. If it comes out as something that could be possibly a phone in the pocket, take it out, fold it out into a tablet. Yeah, yeah. That exactly. could be very functional. And we can put the display uh, in your wrist. After this one, I'll working on the rollable TV. Rollable TV? Yeah. You, you can put it uh, on your wall, so you can roll up and down. BOE is a great illustration of why entrepreneurs are coming back to Beijing when they might have once stayed in Silicon Valley. China is known as a manufacturing nation, and it still is, but manufacturing isn't what it used to be. Here they call this kind of robot-led factory Industry 4.0. Almost a third of the world's TV screens are made by BOE, so there's a good chance the screen you're watching was made right here. The rise of the robots has completely changed China. It's now the world's biggest buyer of robotic arms by miles. A man who has seen BOE change is co-founder Zhang Yu. BOE the whole team, in the world, has now more than 500 employees. If you look at this line, there are about 6,000 people. 
。那这六千多人呢，但是大家看到产线里头实际上是没有人的。那我们这个六千多人呢，呃，大部分是一些技术和产品的研发工程师。BOE mirrors how China is moving up the value chain. Instead of making other people's stuff, they're now inventing their own. Mr. Zhang has invited me to wander around their tech showroom. It's a 10K screen. That's unbelievable. There's no camera that can actually film at that higher resolution yet. That is amazingly crystal clear. Oh, it's so cool! Oh, that is awesome. So it's completely opaque, and then suddenly you can see through it. Oh, it's very clever. It's like an ATM, so only I can see it. In the past few years, BOE has come up with around 40,000 usable patents. BOE have moved away from low-value manufacturing to cutting-edge research and development. It goes to show that the big companies, just like the startups, need to keep innovating, keep creating ideas. They have to keep up with the rapid global rate of technological change. Startups are exploding all over China. I wanted to find out what's unique about those founded in Beijing. Just like Silicon Valley, the best companies here are leaders in software and artificial intelligence. Their success is made possible because of long-established government enterprise zones, like Zhongguansun, which provides support in the early stages. Beijing is also home to around 40 of China's biggest universities that produce world-leading graduates to staff these tech companies. No wonder the cafes here are buzzing with people talking tech. Zhongguansun provides literally everything for you. You can talk to people about all your ideas. You can meet investors. Um, if you don't know how to write a contract, you have lawyers right next door. Oh, I would love to be able to come out here and start a business some point. You should. It's really easy to see the enthusiasm for tech here and the support it gets. And Zhongguansun's successful tech companies provide role models that inspire the risk takers in every succeeding generation of graduates. Most times, uh, the top talents from university, they always want to find a job from big setup companies such as IBM, Microsoft, or Google. But Beijing was very special because top students would like to go to a startup. Probably because there were more successful startup stories in Beijing than anywhere in China. As more startups get successful in Beijing, more are inspired to join them. But Mobike founder Hu Weiwei thinks the city's unique culture has played a part in her success. I think that in this city, there are many young people, many talents, many resources, many resources, and many media. There are many, many, many people who want to go to the city of Beijing. Also, because there are many companies in Beijing, so this city has continued to continue this atmosphere. Beijing clearly has something special to offer would-be startups. But what I'm also learning is that startups like Mobike have also prospered by precisely understanding what Chinese customers want. Xiaomi also worked hard to create a close bond with their mobile phone customers by catering to their individual tastes. Now they're moving into the Internet of Things, selling a whole new range of products to their 200 million smartphone-owning fans. They've cultivated a bamboo forest of 80 startups that make everything from internet connected rice cookers to smart light bulbs, all overseen by Xiaomi. Here's the clever bit. Because all these products are run via the Xiaomi app, every detail about how the product is used is fed back to the company, building a vast and valuable database. Everything is connected with each other, so everything is smart. <laughs> <laughs> And that big data about exactly how products are used helps the company design, market and sell even more products to its millions of customers. The man in charge of Xiaomi's IoT ecosystem is co-founder Liu De. Xiaomi 
这个净化器它会比你更先发现你需要换滤芯了，它就会问你说，哎，你要不要换一个？我我发现你家里的滤芯需要更换了，你要不要在现在购买呢？饭包它每天知道你在几点开饭，它每天知道你吃米饭还是粥，每天你用什么样的大米，每天你吃什么样的大米，我们可以用饭包来卖大米，通过这个饭包的 app， 所以这都是 IOT 时代可能潜藏的机会。It seems to me it's seizing those new opportunities that have defined Beijing startups. It's something you might call the entrepreneurial spirit of Beijing. <laughs> Instead of specializing in one niche, startups here have the confidence to apply their new tech ideas wherever they can see an opportunity. And it's something Noitom's done brilliantly. This is our first medical application we'll called this smart knee brace. From making entertainment more real, Noitom has looked where else the sensors can be used, including a particular interest of mine, medicine. Analyzing a person's walk or gait is immensely complex, but Liu's software means the sensors can get a remarkably accurate picture of the precise way a knee moves. I feel like a bit of a catwalk here. And that's invaluable for monitoring someone's walk for an extended period of time. Because the brace has a SIM card in it, it can provide real-time information direct to your doctor. So here is your left knee, and this is your right knee. So if you have a problem, the doctors can tell this immediately. As well as analyzing any potential problems, it also makes sure any rehabilitation is done correctly. This app can help you to do the exercise correctly. This is like your nurse watch you. Good, because it's surprisingly hard to know if you're doing the right movement. What I really love about Noitom is that they've come up with one cool core bit of tech and thought about all the different ways they can apply it. That's how to capitalize on a good idea. That was such a cool startup. But perhaps my favorite of all the startup revolutionaries I've met was Wu Gansha of UC. Not just a big brain, but also an entrepreneur who understands the market well enough to compete in a world of giants like Google, BMW, or Ford. He's also spotted an opportunity these big beasts have neglected. Detected the person pretty well. As autonomous cars are still a few years off, Wu has applied his awesome AI to another product that could be in operation much sooner. Hello, pedestrian. To me, Wu Gansha demonstrates exactly what a startup should be doing. Good. We pick a niche market, and as you can see, this vehicles run in the private environment for national forest parks, theme parks, airports, and the market is not big enough to attract. The interest of the big giants, but it's big enough for startups. I think this is the easiest way to put your products onto the market and test your technologies. Sometimes you have a vision for a bigger product that could、right. get out there for、right. the masses, but you might need to start, start small. small. Right. Yeah. Right. As an inventor and entrepreneur, I'm always curious about the world around me. What kinds of problems will Inspire innovative solutions, and the more time I spend here in Beijing, I'm starting to realize it's the sheer size and nature of this city that affects which kinds of startups will flourish. It's been an awesome experience visiting Beijing. The combination of top brains, innovation, and risk-taking courage makes this one of the most buzzing places I've ever seen for tech startups. But with all these young entrepreneurs coming from all over China and working 24/7, there's one last startup I want to visit. There's a company here that's using tech to give people a little taste of home. It's the startup that feeds the startups. The very concept of home cook is the result of founder Tang Wanli working long hours trying to come up with a new tech company. To 外面去餐馆吃没那么现实，很多像我们这样年轻人，一个是费用比较高，然后另外自己做又好像没有那么多的时间，然后嗯，甚至还不会做。然后这个后面我发现这是一个绝大多数多数年轻人的这种状况。The answer. 
was getting neighbours to cook. This is how it works, it's really simple. You open the app, find a local cook, select the dishes that you want, put it into your cart. You can either pick up or have it delivered. It's really that simple. Home Cook relies on putting people who want food in touch with people prepared to make it. Much like Uber does with drivers and Airbnb does with spare rooms. Mrs Wang is retired and it seemed a great opportunity to show off her skills and make a few extra yuan. <laughs> we are a startup, which means a lot of time we have to work over time, and we basically have three meals in the company every day. There are many apps that deliver food, but home cooking for me is kind of special because all the other apps they just provide food from restaurants nearby. Good. She's a great cook. There's so much passion for what she does. A home cook, you can really pick the ones that taste healthy and you feel healthy after. <laughs> for an entrepreneur like me, home cook makes a fascinating case study. Like so many companies, it's all about the app. But more than that, its success is based on something more fundamental, being in the right city at the right time. I think Home Cook has done so well in utilising technology as a tool to truly connect home cooks with people who love honest home cooked food. They seem to have the right time, a great app and the perfect place. It's become clear Beijing is a truly exciting place to found a startup. China's changed and walls here have come down rather than going up. Beijing's entrepreneurs have seized on those changes to innovate uniquely local ideas. They've put Beijing right on the front line of global tech. It's a mecca for China's most gifted technologists. It's pushing the boundaries of AI, deep learning and big data. And there's something about the city that inspires courage and lateral thinking. It has been eye-opening to experience the perspectives and mindsets of some of the world-class startups here. They think big, they connect with their customers, and they scale fast, truly driving China's startup revolution.